I purchased this Uniden BCD996P2 scanner a couple of months ago and while I did fumble my way into programming one Motorola analog trunking system into the scanner, it was so difficult that I haven't tried programming it again for a couple of months until just now. Two days ago I decided that I want to understand this scanner so I've taken the big step of erasing my hard won trunking system and starting fresh beginning with conventional system programming and ultimately to trunking and P25 programming. One of the reasons I've had trouble working with this scanner is the fact it didn't, did not supply any kind of programming tree or flowchart in the documentation. And so to make it easier for myself, even though I'm no expert on this radio by any means, I decided to build myself a programming tree so I, to make it easier to conceptualize what I was doing as I added uh, information uh, to the scanner. Here's a block diagram that represents the programming tree for the 996P2 scanner when you're working with conventional channels. It's got three blocks, the system block, group block, and the channel block. And you have to input information in all three of these areas to make the uh, scanner function correctly. The system block is pretty much a filing system. Uh, it sort of lets the uh, operator and, and the scanner determine where the system is at and what it's going to do to a certain extent. It does uh, also store the system type information, which means is the scanner going to be a conventional, is the system going to be a conventional system, a uh, trunking system, or whatever. It does store that. The group is a part that relates to the location of the radio. Could it be in Tallahassee or in you know Sears store or wherever? You would make note of that there. It's kind of a filing system operation as well. And it has no radio data in it. The channel is the box that stores the radio or radio system information. So it stores things like frequency, audio, modulation, and uh, items like that. Once you get the information logged into these three areas, the repeater as far as uh, scanning conventional channels is pretty well set to go. In some cases you could have a system with multiple groups and multiple channels on it and uh, this is the basic block diagram of how that would work. This, you could actually expand this quite a bit with multiple systems, multiple groups, multiple channels, um, which just says that this thing has a lot of flexibility. Here's a layout that might be incurred while trying to scan a county transportation system. First of all, placing that county transportation system in the system box. Well, that system has an east county and a west county operation, so you break it up there into the two group, and in the second group, what east county group, west county group, and finally, East County has two repeaters, channel 1 buses, 151 megs, and channel 2 taxis, 152 megs, while the West County operation has channel 1 for buses on the 450 megs. And the reason for doing all this is so it's easy to locate in your scanner and also easy to identify when your scanner comes alive and starts talking. Every job has got to have a plan, and here's the plan to monitor the radio operation at Bob's Corporation. Uh, Bob's Corporation has been set into the system box. Bob has a store, which relates to the group box, and Bob also has a repeater, which relates to the channel box, and Bob has chosen a frequency of 151.000 megahertz. He's got it set for audio analog only uh, on the ctcss and or dcs selection bob chose dcs digital coded squelch and for his digital coded squelch the actual code he's chosen 054 so now the uh, order of things to do is to place this into the scanner here i am at the scanner again it's still in the scan mode 
with nothing to scan because there are no systems, groups, or channels in it. It's absolutely empty. So the goal is to program this thing so it will copy the uh, activity on the Bob Corporation repeater. So we'll start firstly by hitting menu. At the menu it comes up program system. Remember system group channel. That, that is the system I'm talking about. I hit the select button. It's a new system, brand new. Hit that. There is some radio choice in here. I lied before, but here's some radio choice under the system. What type of system? Is it a P25, a Motorola system, an EDCS, an LTR system, or a conventional? It happens to be oops, it happens to be a conventional system. So I'll choose that. I'm hitting the E, which is yes for to confirm. And now I'm going to edit the name. Right now on top it's telling me the system name is System 1. So I'm going to edit that name because I want it to be called Bob's. I'll hit the alphabet by turning this knob. And I'll go to B. E. Hit the 6. Move it over. O. B. Oops, where'd the S go? Bob's. Okay, and then I'm gonna go I'm gonna blank out the rest of these by going to a blank uh, setting just be by the question mark or between the A and the question mark right there. That goes blank, and I'm gonna do the same thing. Whoops, no. A little confusing. There's another blank. Do, do, do. Another blank. And I'm going to leave that C there. That C actually stands for conventional, so it tells me where it's at. So I am now going to enter that. It took that. Now I'm going to edit some system options. And let's see what those are. Quick key, I'm not going to touch that. That has implications that I don't understand yet. So we're going to I'll probably do a video on that, as well as the startup key and the number tag. I'm not going to set a lockout. Hold time. Hold time is the amount of time this, re this scanner will sit on a system. If you have multiple systems and you set it for five seconds, it will sit on each system for five seconds and scan back and forth. It'll actually eat up a lot of time if you've got a lot of systems. So we're going to pat that right now is set for zero and that's where we're going to leave it at. Okay, then the delay time, that's the time after the station you're monitoring drops their carrier before this thing starts scanning again. It's set for two seconds. I'm going to leave it just like that. Okay, record, not doing that. I'm not doing AGC. I'm not doing... So that is that is all for um, uh, monitoring or for modifying the uh, system options. Okay, with the system options uh, edited, I'm going to move on. And so I will move up or back one by hitting the menu key. There's my edit system options that I just left. Now, in the same queue, you'll notice I have edit group, so I can get to there just by one twist. And there is the edit group, select. It's a new group. Processing, okay. It has chosen to call itself group one, but I wanted to call it Bob Store. So I'm going to hit edit name. Uh, and I'll start the same thing off here by changing the alphabet until I get Bob Store written in there. And there we have Bob Store. So I'm going to enter that. And I'm going to go, go down to some of the other options. Set, oops. Set quick key. I'm not going to do that. It's got implications that I don't understand yet. The next step is edit the channel. And that will be editing the information for the repeater channel itself. Editing the channel information means you're going to match this scanner up to the uh, settings on the repeater or radio system that you're trying to scan. And so we'll go in there and start that. I hit edit channel. It's a new channel. And I'm going to input the frequency. Bob's frequency, as we know, is 151.000. And even one more zero if you want. And we'll enter that. It's waiting. Now I'm going to edit the name. And the name is, what is the name? Bob's Repeater, I guess. And there we have Bob's Repeater inputted. I'll select that. Okay, so we have Bob's Repeater up here. I already edited the name. 
I'll just look at that one. It says edit frequency, but I'm not going to do that. It is 151.000 quadruple zero megahertz. Leave that alone. Set the audio type. Bob, as you know, is an uh, analog system, a conventional analog system. So there's all digital analog only. That's what I want. And then we'll set the question of CTCSS or the DCS uh, protection codes for these radios, or for the scanner actually. Bob is putting out a DCS tone code with his repeater, so we're going to select that. And the code that he's putting out is 054, so we'll select that. And then let's see what else we have. Number tag, we're not going to play with that. Modulation, that's a good one. Bob is on a narrow band FM repeater, so we'll put narrow band FM. Um, we're not going to do any attenuation. No priority, no alert, no record, record, no lockout, no volume offset, not going to copy the channel, not going to delete it, and so we're basically done there. So I'll go back up one, and that would uh, conclude the, the programming of Bob's Corporation repeater on this um, scanner. And so now to get to the top, I'll just hit scan processing and there's Bob's which is which is the um, uh, system and it's scanning if I stop it then you'll have Bob's it's, it's showing you that it locked on Bob's uh, system and for the group it locked on store and it's listening for Bob's repeater although Bob's repeater is not active right now and so I'm gonna put it back on scan and we will get some activity going here Here's a handy talkie that I've programmed to transmit on the same frequency and DCS code as Bob's theoretical repeater transmitter would uh, put out. That would be 151 megahertz uh, with a DCS code of uh, 054. And so now looking at the scanner, it's just busy scanning away. It's on Bob's system and that's all it's going to tell you except it's looking for a conventional system. So I key the radio up and there it is. It stopped on it. It's looking at Bob's system. It's actually locked onto Bob's system. Bob's store group and Bob's repeater for a channel. It's showing that it's a conventional channel. It's showing NFM for narrow band FM. And finally, it's showing the DCS code of 054. I didn't load a system number or a group number. This thing, so there should be a number there somewhere, but it's not there. I'll figure that out and stuff that into another video. This is the uh, manual that came with the unit in 996P2. I didn't like it at first and found it confusing, but after uh, working with the scanner for a while, I find myself going back to this uh, manual more and more and, and pulling information out of it. It is a little complicated, but um, I find out that it does have uh, value. The reference material that really got me going was from markscanners.com. It's called Mark's Scanners, and it has a huge amount of information on various scanners. Of course, this scanner is the 996P2, and the reference for it is right here, a link for it. You can also get it as a, a paper printed manual. Here is the index on Mark's uh, Scanners for the BCD 996P2. This is just the top of it. It goes down pages and pages. It has lots of links and references and it uh, between its own internal linking and using uh, control F for uh, searching for find uh, you can pretty well walk your way through this thing here's an example of some of the documentation originated by mark scanners apparently this is when it happens to be understanding the quick keys and this this kind of uh, personal handling is not in the unit in manual at all and this stuff really helps Oh, oh, oh.